everybody in Jena. Thank you very much to all the organizers uh, who invited me to give a short introduction um, and talk about art and science collaboration um, at the uh, opening of the Jena-based art and science residence at Trafo Jena. I think the title of the project, Entstehung einer künstlerischen Tatsache, is very charming because it obviously refers to the writing of Ludwig Fleck, a Polish scientist who reflected on the social and epistemological process um, in the field of the development of scientific facts almost a century ago. So Fleck published his uh, um, book, Entstehung und Entwicklung einer wissenschaftlichen Tatsache in 1935. And it is as interesting to read um, as ever, and it became a part, I would say, of the canon and is now a classical book in this field. So I will start my own contribution with a provocative question. Uh, is science the new art? to respond to the fact that during the 20th century, a growing number of artists has left um, the traditional art grand, ground of art, the studios and galleries and museums to uh, work instead in scientific contexts like um, laboratories of molecular biology, robotics, uh, artificial life, and many, many others. So today we see more and more spaces emerging where art and science can meet to start a fruitful dialogue and find a common language to open up to pressing issues, to create new spaces for experience and develop new interdisciplinary approaches just the way that the project is uh, in Jena is going to do. And this because scientific research is essentially based on individual creativity. The development of which, however, is often restricted and determined by the given scientific discourse of what Ludwig Fleck called Denkstil in German, thought style in English, and the Denkkollektiv, the thought collective when writing about the genesis and development of a scientific fact. The driving forces of innovative progress should there be, therefore not only depend on the ambition and the thirst and the hunger of individual researcher, but it should be ensured that they can also open up to new conceptual approaches or say new methods. And one way to do that is for sure the engagement with the arts and the artist. Actually, my field of uh, interest and my field of research is for some time uh, the collaboration between art and sciences and laboratory studies. And the question that drives me is why um, uh, did this um, way of producing art became so popular in recent decades for both sides, for the art side and the science side? Well, actually one answer could be because within the intersection between art and science and laboratory life, urgent epistemic questions can be negotiated, followed by new visual narratives, which help us to think about possible futures. Um, in my short introduction, I would like to provide you with two examples, and therefore I would like to include in my remarks um, two artists I work uh, on, um, two artists that uh, get more and more involved in the world of science when faced with the ecological emergencies like climate change, or other forms of environmental destruction driven by the violence of contemporary fossil fuel capitalism. Politics of ecology and environmental activism have found in recent years increasing resonance 
in the contemporary art world, giving rise to a wide range of artistic responses, especially at the intersection of art and activism with a set of drivers uh, artistic approaches which have evolved to raise awareness about the urgency and the complexity uh, of this global challenge and to call for environmental justice, creating a new sphere which actually became particularly attractive to critical hybrid practitioners who often have a background in art and activism as well as in science. To sketch this emerging field, I will introduce to you the interdisciplinary art practice of Canadian uh, artist Max Liborian and the US-based uh, Turkish artist Pina Yoldas, who both relate their art to environmental justice work, DIY bio, and the sciences at large, to draw attention to the irreversible destructions of our marine systems are facing today. And I choose these two uh, examples because I think that uh, Ludwig Fleck just would have appreciated their perspective and their approach uh, very much. So the art practice of Canadian artist Max Liborium has long been concerned with the materiality of waste and the endeavor to open up a wider debate about systems of waste and the socio-cultural economic implication with a strong focus on plastic pollution. Moreover, with a PhD from the Department of Media, Culture and Communication at New York uh, University, and also active in various academic communities, Max Liborian finds it important to articulate new critical frameworks by developing interdisciplinary research approaches with discard studies or anti-colonial scientific practices with the aim of introducing environmental justice to academia. The references to scientific knowledge, scientific research methods and laboratory bench work are a major strategy in her artistic practice but at the same time, she wants to do science differently. She therefore puts established scientific approaches into questions, especially with regard to the inherent colonial worldviews that obviously make scientific communities prefer and privilege certain topics and make them articulate certain questions while suppressing and avoiding others. Rethinking participation or non-participation in science activities and what is recognized in general as doing science is also a question on the historicity of the progress that forms scientific communities, science identities, research methods or academic standards. So now I will um, show you my slides. Yeah, and refer to the first project I would like to introduce to you. So with art projects like Seeing Like a Scientist, Max Liborian looks for marine plastic in the guts of fish and seabirds. With caught objects in digestion studies, she shows digital uh, microscopic images as the result of plastic ingestion studies from the guts of Atlantic cod taken with a camera built into the laboratory microscope at Cellar, the civic laboratory for environmental action research, which she's running. Based at the Department of Geography in Memorial University of Neufundland, St. John's, Clear explores, explores marine uh, microplastics and wild food project, as well as food security and food sovereignty with a focus on the community-based and citizen science uh, monitoring 
of plastic pollution. And I show you a screenshot of her of the website of her of her laboratory. And uh, yeah, it's a feminist anti-colonial marine science laboratory. And the very important uh, uh, sentence above is, uh, we're working to do science differently, <coughs> which is interesting because uh, in 2015, when she um, did her project with her community, the cod stocks had recovered somewhat after the total collapse um, of the Atlantic Northwestern Court Fishery in 1992. And I show you one example here, um, I mean, uh, a diagram that makes uh, obvious what happened in the 1960s and the 1970s when there was an enormous overfishing and there were uh, a great number of scientists and politicians involved and the uh, number of uh, um, fish went down to almost zero. And uh, what we all know, there is no recovery from zero. So this collapse did irreversible damage to the Atlantic cod population, which was brought to the brink of extinction and had a devastating socio-economic impact on Newfoundland communities. Almost 40,000 people lost their job overnight. So while Max Liborian is offering community-based citizen science strategies for monitoring plastic pollution in marine animals and develop de developing innovative research approaches, Pina Yoldas offers with her speculative design approaches, new visual narratives to imagine how future biologists will evolve in the age of the Anthropocene. And I will show you the first slide of an exhibition I will refer to in a minute. Uh, actually, Pina Yolzas also um, gained a PhD, and this was in 2016 uh, from Duke University with a text or say thesis she wrote on speculative biology's new directions in art in the age of the Anthropocene. And for Yolzas, speculative biology is a theoretical mothership of a group of her art projects spending more than a decade of research and practice on the design of speculative living systems. Speculative biology is the fountainhead for artistic research projects such as Ecosystem of Excess, which she started in 2014 and which we could exhibit at the Schering Foundation in Berlin, or Hollow Ocean, both of which demonstrate, demonstrate the artistic utilization of biological entities to instigate cultural criticism. And I will show you a few more slides. So these are about five of these uh, organs uh, that she designs, organs that will in a speculative future will be um, able to adapt to adapt to the toxic uh, environment, uh, what we call our plastic oceans today. So with uh, an ecosystem of excess, and I will show you also my last slide, or hollow ocean from um, just this year, from 2021, Yoldas moved in close co collaboration with experts and with scientists from observation to documentation to speculation to present a colorful future scenario that has its origin in the past and will continue to run its course no matter what. As a byproduct of human mass consumption, modern materials like plastic have turned the ocean into a new ecosystem where artificial and natural aspects are inseparably connected. Scientists from Brown University and Holtzwood Oceanographic Institution recently came up with the term plastisphere to describe the transformation of our marine ecosystems into a human-made plastic soup that generate new organisms and new micro 
biol reefs, even on the smallest plastic particle. And uh, yeah, to, um, to wrap up um, my uh, intention to present Max Liborian and uh, Pina Yoldas to you is to show how contemporary artists who have a both a strong background also in science and in academia, but also work hands on uh, in laboratories like Max Liborian in her own laboratory um, are I think very interesting figures to show how art and science collation, uh, collaboration could look like today and how art, especially art like, like we see here on this slide, uh, um, is able to articulate narratives, narratives we need for a broader public to understand what is going on in science, but what is also going on in uh, what we call still uh, yeah, nature or our environment. And uh, therefore, I think it is um, what's going on in Jena, I think is a wonder con wonderful contribution to the whole a uh, field of art and science collaboration or art and science residencies. And I'm very curious and happy to learn more about the results in, uh, in October. So, um, well, this is all for today and I wish you a wonderful evening.